She suffered and she was tortured. If you don't like somebody, I get it, but you hated her. You hated her so much that you would do what you did to her. My little girl was taken, beaten, shot, and burned alive. And that person is still here, walking around. This is True Crime Arizona, an Arizona's Family Originals podcast. Tempe, Arizona is a bustling place almost any day of the week. Bars and restaurants line Mill Avenue, where college kids and young professionals often hang out. Arizona State University is in the heart of Tempe, the main contributor to the city's young and vivacious atmosphere. So even on a Sunday evening, it was lively out. It's why on April 16th, 2023, 22-year-old Mercedes Vega was getting ready to go meet friends. We believe she was debating between going to go get sushi or going to Dave & Buster's. That's Tynisa Williams, one of Mercedes' best friends. Her last message that her friend received was around 8.54 p.m. and she left around 9.15. We know Mercedes Vega left her Tempe apartment around 9 p.m. because there's surveillance footage of it. The video shows Mercedes walk into the parking garage, appearing to be looking at her phone. My assumption is that she's FaceTiming because she never talked on the phone. And the fact that she's got it like this and she's walking makes me assume she's FaceTiming. She looks relaxed. Nothing seems abnormal. It's video her mom and dad, Tom and Erica Pillsbury, have watched over and over. You can see when she comes out that she does not have a care in the world. She's not paying attention to her surroundings. She's dressed to go to Dave & Buster's. That's the last video of Mercedes Vega alive. What happens next is impossible to understand. My little girl was taken, beaten, shot, and burned alive. And that person is still here, walking around, existing. She suffered, and she was tortured. If you don't like somebody, I get it, but you hated her. That's ultimately what it looks like. You hated her so much that you would do what you did to her. It's hard for the Pillsburys to wrap their heads around how we even got here, because to them, pictures and videos play in their minds of the little girl they watched grow up. She loved horses. Um, She had a horse named Cash, and that horse was thought he was a person because Mercedes treated him like a person. She played the violin, she had a voice, and she would sing. She sung the national anthem several times at several events. Her dad looks back and laughs at her strong-willed personality, even from a young age. When she was six years old, she did a PowerPoint presentation why we should go to Disney World. They had recently spent Thanksgiving as a family in Alaska, her parents telling me she enjoyed every second with her cousins. After the holidays and back in Arizona, she was working toward becoming a personal trainer. To me, Mercedes was a very strong-willed young lady, very determined to be successful, was a, a people pleaser. I felt that at 22, she just started to find herself. The last anybody knew on April 16th, she had left to go meet her friends out. But what her parents didn't know until the next day is she never made it there. In the early morning hours of April 17th, Mercedes' body was found in a burning car dozens of miles away off the I-10 near Tonopah, Arizona. We actually drove the path that she drove and it was the hardest thing we've ever had to do. We actually drove out to where her final resting place was. That's the main freeway you take from Phoenix to get to Southern California through Palm Springs into Los Angeles. 
so it's heavily trafficked. It didn't take long for the car to be found on fire, but it wasn't Mercedes' car. Nobody knows whose car she was in. They could have drove five more minutes and taken her off the highway and just laid her out in the desert. But they left her on a highway knowing that this is one of the busiest highways traveling to L.A. with semis. That's why the car was found so quick. Her car was found somewhere else, abandoned near the culinary dropout in Tempe, not far from her apartment. It was very sloppy, um, but I do believe it was premeditated. I do believe that she was targeted. Why take her and take the risk of being pulled over driving to Tonopah, which is 60 miles away? Why would you take that risk? Why take the risk of driving her car down and being on camera and parking it down by the culinary dropout? Why would you do that? Because you're just taking more risk for yourself to be caught. Someone had to see something. The discovery of her body in a burning car in the middle of an interstate was gruesome enough. But the Pillsburys would soon learn from investigators and the autopsy report what truly happened to Mercedes. Before we go into it, I do want to warn you, this is upsetting and graphic. Erica's mom remembers what the investigator said to her as he began to share what they found. There's something I want to tell you prior. Um, she wasn't vaginally or anally assaulted. Um, however, uh, there was bleach in her mouth. According to the autopsy report, Mercedes Vega was hit on the head, shot in the arm, had bleach in her mouth, and had smoke in her lungs, meaning when that car was set on fire, Mercedes was still alive. We knew that she had been um, bludgeoned and hurt and hit um, and shot and uh, ultimately none of that killed her because she's so freaking tough um, and then ultimately they just burned her alive and my assumption is is because she was fighting I believe someone was forcing her or trying to force her to do something that she said no I know she died fighting her mom never got to see her daughter's body again. They had her zipped up upside down in a body bag with a heavy blanket on top of her. I didn't get to see her. I didn't get anything that she had. The consensus is by her family and investigators that she was taken by someone or multiple people in her apartment parking garage, that the incident began there, which leaves even more mystery and confusion. Why would you not just shoot her in the parking garage? If death was the ultimate <coughs> goal, then that would have made the most sense. It leads them to believe her killer or killers wanted something from her. Money? A favor? A deal? Did she know too much about something? One of Mercedes' best friends, Mackenzie Lockhart, has struggled with this since the day Mercedes died, full of anger. Who, what, where, when, why? Like, it just doesn't make sense. How dare you? How dare you take her from us? from her family, from her friends, and anybody that ever cared or met her. How dare you do this? At the moment, you guys don't really know a motive that would have come into play. No, we do no. not. She was very secretive about things she would do in her life, but if, if she felt threatened, um, that is one thing I know my daughter would call me and tell me and ask advice, or she'd call her mom, or she'd say, come down here, this is going on. Mercedes' parents knew she was dancing at a club part-time to make money on the side while working to become a personal trainer. This was not a secret kept from them, but it may play an important role in this homicide investigation. Do you believe it was somebody she met through work 
or that could have been tied or, or a random person? It's possible. It's very possible. Um, I mean, she didn't work very often, but she was, like, when you would see her, when she would walk in, people would notice. This case has been at a standstill for months, and it's caused some discouraging thoughts for her mom. Did they think because she danced twice a week that no one cared about her? Is that what they think? Did they think that no one would notice? There's been a reason Tom and Erica have waited to speak out. For one thing, they wanted to let the Maricopa County Sheriff's Office do what they needed to do and not get in the way of the investigation. But because of the unknown and the brutality of what happened to their daughter, there's understandable fear. We're scared. Yes. We don't know who did this. We were nervous about doing this because now people will know that we're her parents. If it's like a cartel or somebody said, you know, she was targeted, I want that girl, or if they had noticed her and there had been other people in her apartment that had been thinking that they were going to be kidnapped. Um, and if somebody tried to kidnap Mercedes, she wouldn't let them. There's no way. And a thought that plagues her friends and family. Are they targeting other women that are her age because they feel it's an easy target? And we don't know if she's the only one. Mercedes' friends had had enough. Months of waiting and waiting for justice with no answers as to who could have done this and no one in custody. They decided to take matters into their own hands, passing out flyers near Mill Avenue in Tempe about Mercedes' case. They also began an Instagram page and TikTok called Honoring Mercedes Vega, posting pictures and videos of Mercedes, memories that resonate with those who visit the page, and a tip line they created for people to call. In a matter of days, these social media pages went worldwide and Tynisa started getting flooded with messages. I'm seeing this in Australia. I'm seeing this in Anchorage. And yeah, it's doing way better than we could have ever imagined. We met Tynisa and Mackenzie out in Tempe as they were passing out flyers for the evening. There's something to be said for boots on the ground work. We watched many people stop and talk to them, curious about Mercedes' case and why they were out there. You could hear the passion in Mackenzie's voice immediately, wearing a piece of Mercedes jewelry. I will always fight for her. This is one of her chains that her mom gave me. I'm always going to fight for her. MCSO has now put out a silent witness reward for up to $2,000 for anyone who has information about what led up to her murder and who is responsible. The Pillsburys have been working with them on this for some time as the desperation for answers eats at them. The truth is, there's no instruction manual or guide as to how you deal with losing your child like this. You might watch similar stories on the news, but nothing could have prepared the Pillsburys to go through this. We are in therapy because there is no, like if I say, here's a, a pamphlet or here's a playbook how to, to come through this. There really isn't any way to get through this. We go day by day, minute by minute, hour by hour. We may take 10 steps forward one day and take 15 steps backwards the next day. Um, it's a roller coaster of a life. It's eating us alive every single day because these persons are walking around and no one's being held accountable. And my daughter mattered. Sitting in their home now, it's full of Mercedes spirit. Pictures of her with family and friends now fill an entire wall in their living room, a reminder of Mercedes smile. Across from that wall, now sits in urn with her ashes inside. It was important to her parents that she is not at the medical examiner's office, but is now home. Her dad talks to her in heaven. All he wants to do is feel connected to Mercedes as they find the strength to keep going. And the one time that she needed me, I wasn't there. And I live with that every day. 
And I'm so angry at this world right now that people are allowed to walk around and go out to dinner and be with their friends and they can actually do this to someone. And, and I promise her, I promise her, I, I wanna, I, I'm not going to let them, I'm not going to rest until someone is put away for a long, long time. And, and one of these days, when, I, when it's my turn, and I've told her this, I'll be looking for her and she'll guide me where I need to go. And I love her so much. He hopes Mercedes may be the reason another girl or anyone else doesn't become a victim to a crime like this. Their daughter didn't die in vain, that her life may spare another. He pleads with the public, no information or detail is too small to share with investigators. Your tip could be the tip that sends this over the top. Um, and it may be the minimal thing, like you say, oh, I, I remember seeing that car, or I remember seeing um, that girl, or I remember this, or whatever. I just hope that people, that when they listen to this and they see this, that she didn't deserve this. No one's daughter, son, whatever, deserves to happen to what happened to our daughter. Um, it, it's, it's just, it's to do what you would do to someone, you really have no soul. This was the first time her parents ever sat down for an interview since their daughter died. And Erica wants Mercedes to know, despite their pain, they will never give up. <laughs> I love you. I will never stop. I'll never stop fighting. <laughs> You didn't deserve what happened to you. You're my baby. If you have any information about what happened to Mercedes Vega on April 16th, 2023, please call Silent Witness at 480-WITNESS. You can remain completely anonymous, or you can contact the Maricopa County Sheriff's Office directly. True Crime Arizona, the podcast, is hosted by me, Brianna Whitney, and produced by Sergio Hernandez. It's a production of Arizona's Family, 3TV, CBS5, and azfamily.com in Phoenix, Arizona. This is True Crime Arizona, an Arizona's Family Originals podcast. 